Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. In this video, we're going to be looking at deforestation. It is a three-part series looking at physical geography. Uh, your T1.2 looking at the causes for deforestation, okay, causes of deforestation. We're going to be looking at what are the various causes. And then the next part, we're going to look at the effects. And then lastly, the strategies. So in this part, let's look at what are some of the factors or causes that causes deforestation to occur in today's society. So you're going to have anthropogenic factors as well as later on your natural causes. So anthropogenic basically means human, human-related causes. Firstly, we have this thing known as excessive logging. So logging is essentially like it suggests, right? If you think of logs, you think of these long, uh, kind of like, you know, wood, wooden-like uh structure based you know logs right they're basically logs so in logs when there's excessive logging it can basically lead to, lead to deforestation right because we are cutting down trees that is essentially deforesting okay deforestation basically means to clear a forest right so this can be in various methods it can be via logging right simply cutting down trees it can also be in slash and burn burning down trees indonesia is known for that right Commercial logging occurs whereby hardwoods or whatever, right, they are basically chopped down be to meet the demand of consumers, right? For example, furniture, construction materials, paper, a lot of these kind of things that are in demand would actually require logging to be done, right? So that you can construct these commercial products for consumers. So the extraction of such trees also would require roads, right, logging roads into the forest. So this can lead to further clearing of the forest. If you notice, logs tend to be very, very large in size and they require huge, huge loaders in order to carry them out of the forest towards the, be it the production plant or either that extraction site or whatever it is. So this requires the road to be cleared up for these trucks to move in and out, which causes even further deforestation to occur, right? Because we need to make way for these roads to be constructed. One of the biggest causes of deforestation deforestation is because of commercial logging. So companies are usually the driving player behind this. So if you want to link it back, we can always link it to Team 2 when we look at TNCs. Right? A lot of TNCs that want to manufacture goods and services for the entire world would wind up having to deforest areas in order to get necessary raw materials like wood for them to be able to produce such products. So it's a huge cause of deforestation, right? namely that commercial or the capitalism in general is basically a huge driver of this issue. Another form of excessive logging would be under this subsistence logging so subsistence itself essentially means um, that it has to basically be of certain basic use to a certain someone right so it's for the purpose of cooking heating fulfilling of basic needs and it's usually a smaller cause of deforestation but if you add up a bunch of people who are all doing the same thing right chopping down trees for the sake of be it fueling their their meal uh, their 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 cooking or did that for them to actually use it to maybe uh, construct shelters for themselves it actually leads to a bigger issue so it tends to be found amongst the indigenous communities right the smaller communities that are found within these forests itself uh, but it's definitely an immediate problem on the local scale right whereby a lot less fortunate do not have any access to immediate resources they would actually wind up logging down the trees which can lead to the clearing of forests as well. Right? Very, very common in a lot of areas with large forests. There are actually quite a few people who live inside these areas. Next, we have agriculture. So agriculture can also be seen as one of the huge reasons behind deforestation. Primary products, basically basics, the initial stages are seen as income source for less developed countries right so this is an avenue for them to actually boost growth and grow in size so what happens is that when there is a search for these materials like palm oil for example 
uh, especially with the depletion of fossil fuels, right? This actually requires extraction of trees because there are palm trees or certain types of trees that has these additional minerals and additional materials that can be drawn out from them, right? So this will lead to the deforestation of such trees in a forest as well, right? If for the sake of commercial agriculture. So commercial, meaning that this is meant to be taken in, right? you chop down the trees, you get, let's say, a certain resource, palm oil, and you sell it, right? This is when it becomes commercial. It is only subsistence if you actually use the palm oil instead of selling it. That is the difference. Which leads on to subsistence agriculture, right? It's for the immediate harvesting by small-scale farmers for their own profit. Right, so, for example, they sell to their neighbor instead of you know bringing it out there to transform this product, value add to it, and then sell it outside, uh, in as in outside as in the rest of the world. Okay, so this can be very widespread due to the large number of poor people living in the tropical areas, and deforestation is usually conducted via a slash and burn technique. Right, slash and burn basically means that they slash the forest and they burn out, uh, burn off the remaining parts of it. Right, so it can cause massive deforestation, as we know that wood is able to. Um, I mean, it's not. A, it basically can burn, right? It, it especially accompanied with the amount of oxygen that's in the area, right? It can burn for very long periods of time, and it can spread very, very fast as well, right? So this is what happens in a lot of areas. So subsistence agriculture is also a reason, right? When the small scale communities over there actually farm their own palm oil, farm their own materials and then they use it for themselves to make their own little source of income. Next we have mining industries. So mining industries is also part of your team too uh, under extractive industries. Right? When they are actually when there's an increase in demand for your natural resources, for example, oil, coal, rare elements, what happens is that a lot of countries and companies will start to look for all of these areas, these deforested areas, to try and locate either mining sites or extraction sites, right? So this can actually lead to them setting up these extraction sites, which actually immediately reduces the amount of forest there, right? Because they need to make way for these factories, make way for these extraction sites. They are going to have to clear the forest, Right, so what happens is that when oil and coal mining requires huge areas of land, um, they are actually used to be constructed for transportation f- through the roads that are being constructed, as well as for the sites themselves to ensure that there's an area, large enough, large enough area, for all of your machinery and all to be able to dig up certain minerals from the ground. So this is on a rise due to scarcity as well as hunger for profits by your TNCs. Right, naturally, a lot of TNCs if they want to get involved in the extractive industries, they are going to have to set up in location-specific areas. Right, we covered this more in Team 2.2, so go and check those out instead. Won't dive too deep into that, but mainly this is a cause for why deforestation is happening. Right, For the sake of having to make way for roads as well as having to make way for the extraction sites themselves. Next, we move on to the natural factors, so we're not looking at human-driven factors anymore. Firstly, we have got forest fires. This is very, very normal, right? In a lot of countries, for example, Australia or California, when it reaches certain times of the year, right, especially during a summer period, it can actually get extremely, extremely hot, right? So areas that, let's say, have maybe a large, dense area of forest has the ability for a lot of these little shrubs and all to dry out and dry leaves can actually catch fire more easily, right? So what happens is that when they catch fire, naturally the fire will spread, right? It spreads like wildfire, right? That's why they're saying it spreads like wildfire, right? Because it can actually spread very, very fast across an entire forest. So forest fires that are uncontrollable can destroy thousands of acres of forest, right? Acres is the unit of a certain amount of land or forest. So acres worth of forest can be destroyed simply by forest fires that go out of hand, right? So, for example, California, bushfires in Australia, New South Wales, these are very, very common examples whereby forest fires have actually led to massive deforestation that was not triggered by human activities, right? So, climate also plays a part over here, right? If you're looking at the summer periods of the month, I mean, of the year, it will definitely also lead to forest fires happening. 
So what are some of the other factors? We can look at stakeholders. For example, debts, right? When a country is in debt, naturally you want to try and pay it off, right? You don't want to be you don't want to be in debt, right? As a country, so if let's say LDCs are like are lacking any sort of financial means to be able to pay off these debts, one of the ways that they can actually look at is to possibly allow these developed countries to bring in their TNCs and exploit the forests, right? Through setting up of their industries, their factories, their plants. But by doing so, the debt can be waived off, right? meaning that it's cancelled. So many developed countries with a lack of natural resources may tap on the financially poor countries which are resource rich. Right? A lot of them are found in these forests. So to waive off some of these debts, many of these less developed countries will actually allow TNCs to actually set up their factories in order to clear up any sort of debt that is remaining. So this can lead to a power struggle between the two as a lot of people will be wondering, right? Are we looking at the environment here or are we looking at profits and money? Right, in the case of this, it can actually cause a lot of pressure on a lot of LDCs and force them into an agreement to actually give up the forests for the sake of profit incentive firms to actually come in and operate which leads to them being able to waive off any form of debt that they owe to the developed countries. So this could be another reason as well that could actually be behind why certain countries have no choice but to succumb to deforestation. So for your evaluation for this entire chapter, I think it's quite straightforward. Just take note that population growth and industrialization, if we realize, is actually one of the huge main drivers behind deforestation, right? We look at a lot of commercial needs by TNCs, by firms, that actually causes untoward pressure onto forests, right, due to the need to create value-added goods to meet consumer demand. End of the day, it always boils down to the capitalist system of selling and buying goods, right? So there's always a need for strong governance, to govern forest usage and ensure that deforestation is kept to a minimum. It is possible to actually control deforestation rates. No one ever said that it was impossible to control, but there is a need for strong policies, which we will look at in the next few parts to come, and how we can actually split the land up to ensure that deforestation is kept at a stable and low rate. It is impossible to completely ignore or completely assume that deforestation can be completely, um, you know, you can get rid of it completely because it will always be a thing, right? People always need resources. So how can we actually best manage to control it? We will see how that can be done later on. Exam requirements for this part, you just need to be able to explain and discuss the various causes of deforestation as well as use evaluation techniques where required to weigh and determine the underlying root causes of deforestation. Right, so I'll be going through an essay, an in-depth essay, on my YouTube memberships and Patreon for this on how we can look at the root causes of deforestation and use that as a pedestal, right, as a pivot point to explain wh- why and how we can actually look at deforestation um, via these root causes to properly frame a strong argument as to how deforestation can be managed and how it is even caused by these root causes in the first place, right? So do check that out as well. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in joining that to find out more. If not, that's all I have for this video. If you did enjoy it and you did learn something, be sure to give it a like. As well as to subscribe to the channel, it's free, doesn't cost you anything. And you can always change your mind later on, right? So if you have any, any co- uh, questions, you can always leave it in the comment section below. I will answer them as usual. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.